Hi there, this is Aaron. Today is Sunday the 19th of July and it's day 16 on the allotment. Today is an absolutely glorious day. Now, uh, ordinarily, sort of uh, now, the middle of uh, July, is really when you sit back and just uh, pick things off the tree. And certainly there's an awful lot of things that uh, I'm going to be taking home with me today. So uh, that's certainly there. But the big thing that I've really got to do is to deal with all these weeds. And that is my major task for the day. <laughs> well, as you can see, now, I know why this has happened. It's because I've really had to delay putting things in the ground and I've carried on digging when I can because the weather's been pretty rubbish. But whilst that has happened, the weeds have been growing. And uh, there is some quite serious weeds here. Um, this is at the very top of the plot and you can see that I've got grasses, I've got some yeah, real monsters growing there. In fact, one of the weeds might well be the most impressive thing growing on the plot. Well, I'm crouching down so that you can get a good look at these, but uh, now that I've cleared these weeds away, you can see that I've got some lilies. Now, these were my bulbs that I bought at the Edible Garden Show. I bought nine. Um, I think that's a weed. I don't think that's a lily, but I'm going to leave it in just in case. Um, four, maybe five came up, and now there's three still living. But uh, now that I've cleared the weeds away from here, I'm uh, quite confident that we might get some lily flowers this year. They're supposed to be really beautiful, these ones, so I'm looking forward to them. <laughs> but the important thing is that clearing the weeds and the fight back starts here. <laughs> well, you can see that some of my onions have started to fall over, and that means they're ready. There's also some of the garlic that's uh, coming through now. Yes, this is weedy again, and you know how recently it was that I weeded this. This mare's tail just comes from out of nowhere, but uh, the good thing here is that I appear to have protected my onions long enough. And, uh, I mean, there's a few that are suffering, but... Uh, Yep, there are some to dig up, so we're going to have some onions today. That is a bit special, because after all my disasters with courgette this year, um, they were all dying when I put them in the ground, all the seedlings, and so I just thought, you know what, I'm going to put a seed in, and I did. And you know what? It's taken, it's fired, and now it's growing. Now this is my last attempt at a courgette for this year, so I'm gonna try and look after it really well. But uh, after all that, if we can get some courgette this year, that will make me very, very happy. There's a pumpkin next to it, which you can see. And uh, yeah, that's one of the giant pumpkins from Chris, and so I haven't managed to kill all of those yet. Um, I'm hoping that at least one of those is going to survive. It's all a bit weedy, but we've also got some brassicas in here. So uh, there's quite a lot to feel good about here at this bed. Um, I'm starting to feel vaguely as if this is not going to be a complete disaster. But uh, all that remains to be seen. <laughs> I just want to show you this. Um, th I I've just had delivered this. This is a Bosch ART 26LI. Um, it's a strimmer. Now, I'm really pleased this has been delivered because, I mean, it's much better than I thought it was going to be. Um, this runs off of a lithium-ion battery. And the, the first thing I noticed is, uh, I don't know if you can see in here, but uh, rather than a bit of string, this has actually got a plastic cutter. So it's actually capable of uh, cutting more than you know, sort of like a strimmer. And the big problem with strimmers is that the string gets everywhere, the, the, the cassette explodes, and it, it's, it's horrible. I've used those before. Um, this runs on a battery, and I'm about to find out sort of uh, whether it can uh, get round my plot. The claim is that this can go round a football pitch. Now, it can't go in the middle of a football pitch. It can go round the edge of a football pitch. 
Um, now, if that's the case, then it's going to make absolutely you know, very short work of my plot. But the really amazing thing, I mean, it feels really good. The, the Bosch battery, this was 70 quid delivered from Amazon. Now, I have to admit that I'm not a fan of petrol strimmers. I don't like the smell. I don't like the way that I'm constantly there pulling on cables, getting worn out um, and not getting anything done. I find them incredibly frustrating machines. Whereas this, well, you know, this might do the job. Well, as you can see, I've been right round um, my plot now and it was absolutely brilliant. So uh, if you're in the market for a strimmer, I highly recommend the Bosch ART 26 Li, 70 pounds, delivered from Amazon. <laughs> now when Sean was here, one of the things that uh, he was a bit disappointed about as he was going around our plot is that we didn't have any tea making facilities and I said I was going to rectify it soon and I've rectified it now so uh, there you go there's the kettle there's the burner let's just switch it on and have a little break and as Sean might say a cup of tea you have to be completely committed if you think of the example of the guy with the the circus act you know that he's got the, the, the pole with the spinning plates and he's like he's got a plate spinning on a pole and then he gets another one going but he's got to go back to this one before the plate falls down um, it's a little bit like that well yep we were getting on and then suddenly I think everyone's heard the breaking news that uh, Rick Van Man has given up his plot well, certainly, I mean, I think all of us were inspired to either make videos about this or to take up allotmenting uh, by Rick. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's certainly a decision that I'm sure he hasn't come to lightly. And I would like to say good luck, Rick, with whatever you do next, whatever hobby you take on. Um, I hope you're going to be really happy with your new ho hobbies. And uh, I, I, I hope that you find the enthusiasm for things that uh, clearly you say that uh, you'd lost uh, for the allotment. And uh, I, I, I understand why, because it is a very, very big commitment. Um, but uh, you've really, really done brilliant things uh, for YouTube and for gardening. So uh, thanks very much and all the best. Well, what I noticed is that a couple of my onions had fallen over, which means that uh, they're ready. So what I've done is I've dug some up. I've dug the ones up that have fallen over. And you see, some of them are actually a good hand size. I've got a couple there. Now, considering that my onions were so incredibly late that I had so many problems. These are the Stuttgarter Giant that was the tip from Blue Star Dave. And Dave, thank you so much for introducing me to these. I don't think I would have had onions if it wasn't for you this year. And uh, certainly not unless I'd found Stuttgarter Giant, which I have. And, uh, well, you know, because it was so late, they went in. I could have had absolutely nothing, but uh, that's not a bad haul at all. I'm pleased. Well, by the same token, um, just as my onions were ready, they also look to be uh, some of my garlic ready. Now, the way that you can tell, 
And I can't remember if it was Jane or Laura, but I think it was one of you, um, saw this on your garlic, that if you see escape on the garlic and it loops round, well, one of the reasons that garlic tells you that it's ready is if it has this scape and it loops round. If it's sticking straight up, it's still growing. But when it loops round, it's ready. So uh, that's how I've known that uh, this garlic is ready. And if you look at that, let's just get a good grip. That is a nice size garlic. That is a nice size garlic. I'm pleased with that one. I'm really pleased with that one. Um, there is some really, really good garlic here. Now, uh, this was a tip from Ian Nocton. Again, I, I planted my garlic really late. Uh, this is Solent White, which uh, is a variety that can cope with a short season. It's apparently not the best tasting, but it's certainly not bad, and it's going to be better than anything that you can buy in the shops. And, uh, well, that tip from Ian means that this year I have garlic. So thank you very much, mate. I appreciate that. Another harvest that I've had out today are these radish. Now, this is a French breakfast radish, which is a perfect size. And I'm really, really pleased with it. I was a bit worried I may have left these in too long. But, of course, everything's very slow. And so it looks as if I've pulled these out at the right time, and there's quite a few here. But there's also another variety. Now, this is called White Icicle. And, well, you can see it. This is an absolute giant radish. Um, I have no idea what the flavour is like, but I did like the sound of it. And so uh, I'm really looking forward to trying these, because I love radish in salads. Well, as you see... We've got a wonderful harvest today. Uh, we've got onions ready, we've got garlic ready. Uh, there's more currants, there's... Uh, yeah, it, it's just coming through all over the place. So uh, today has been a really good day and I'm gonna take it all home now and I'm gonna turn it into a supper. <laughs> but I would like to say to you, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time on The Allotment. Goodbye. <laughs>